This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Hey guys, Mugi Mikey here, and I'd like to show you how to draw Classic Sonic. I actually have done many how to draw Sonic the Hedgehog streams here on YouTube, and even some on Twitch, but with this one, I'm going for something a little different. With this one, I want to focus a bit more on the polish and make it a bit more streamlined. I think the results may be different, with an overall new vibe. So, let's get into it. First of all, I open up Paint Tool's side with a blank canvas and draw a, a circle. A circle is what I usually start with, and my, my line work may be a little sketchy. Yours can be a bit more clean if you want, but I prefer the sketchy look. It gives me a little bit more room to, uh, to make some changes. And then I go in with the muzzle here. I make it look a bit like a hot dog bun. You see with the little, little bump in the middle? That is where the nose goes. And then, right above that, you want to start with the eyes. You see how I have it curve right into the indents of the cheeks? It's like a puzzle piece. They fit right in there together. And then you want to go in with the eyes. Those are catch lights. For those of you who don't know, catch lights are those shiny little parts on eyes. And then, draw an oval like this for the nose. Of course, a little shiny part on the nose as well. There you go. Then give him that cheeky smile. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the brows here. I'm adding that one. Now I'm adding the quills. There are three of them. That's the second one, and now I'm going to add the third. Now you can go ahead and draw the ear. What they usually do with the ears here is that they don't draw the inner ear on the on the outer ear. The, you know, the ear that's facing the other direction. So in order to stay true to that, I only draw the inner ear on the, on the ear closest to the camera. Now when it comes to the ears here, I'm actually drawing off of the gray circle. I'm using that as my guide for the ears. That's basically where his head is. Now I tilted the head. I want him to be running, so I figured a tilted head would look a little bit better. And now here's an oval for his body. It's very round, unlike modern Sonic, which is shaped like a bean. And then I go ahead and draw an oval right there, because that's where I want his hand to be. And then I'll draw the actual arm after that. But first, I want to draw the cuffs of the glove. Go ahead and draw an oval right there, so the arm can go right in there. Now the reason why I draw the arm last is because I want to connect points A to C. A and C are the most important points, because that determines where point B is going to go, which is the arm. Right here, I'm going to focus on drawing his digits. Here's his thumb. There's his index finger along with his knuckles. Here's the folds right there for his clenched fist. Now I'm going to go in and draw the little tummy patch. One thing that's universal about Sonic's design is that tummy patch is always there. Alright, now here's the leg. And here is the... Well, I don't want to call it a sock because according to Naoto Oshima, it is not a sock. It is actually part of Sonic's shoes. Believe it or not, Sonic actually wears boots. Those are cuffs. To the top of his boots. They're just rolled down. Now I wonder what they would look like rolled up, huh? So go ahead and draw the strap right there. Because this leg is on the other side, we're not going to see the buckle there. But we are going to see the buckle on the other shoe here. But first, let's draw this leg so we know where to draw the shoe. Normally I draw the foot first, but because this leg is bending, I think it takes precedence. And 
here's the other shoe cuff. Feels so weird saying that. You have no idea. I wish they were socks. And here's the other shoe. You know, the kind that Michael Jackson apparently used to wear. Or is it Santa Claus? Either way, neither of them actually wore these shoes. And here's the buckle. You want to make sure it extends beyond the strap just a little bit on each side. And now, here's the other fist. It's just to the left of his head. Don't forget to draw the little line folds in there because his, uh, because his index finger is clenched. Last of all, we just have to draw his back quill. There it is right there in front of his shoe. Oh, and you can't forget about his little tail. Here it is. And this is what your Sonic sketch should look like. Now, because I'm working in Paint Tool Psy, I went into a new layer, and in the original layer, I turned down the opacity. Now, in my new layer, I'm actually beginning to ink this. I started with the nose, and then I moved on to the mouth. Usually, I always begin with the face, and then I work my way out. Now, with this one, I'm not going to ink the muzzle just below the eyes. Not with the traditional black, anyway. I'm going to use a different color for that, just so it looks a little bit more fleshy, for a lack of a better term. I think it gives it a little bit more life. Now I'm going in with the hand here, because it's right in front of his face. Get those knuckles in there. How to draw knuckles. And don't forget, if this is going by too fast for you, feel free to pause, rewind, take your time. This is meant to be fun. Ink those catch lights in. There you go. And now you can go ahead and begin inking that arm. There you go. The bottom of his muzzle is now complete. For those of you wondering why I'm zooming in and out, I actually use a mouse, so I don't have pressure sensitivity either. So in order for me to get those smooth lines, I zoom in and out. I've always found it has better results. Inking that shoe cuff, that's totally not a sock. There we go. And here is the buckle. Now, I'm actually going to go in and add a little bit more detail to the buckle here. I want to give it a little bit more depth. You'll see what I mean. You see on the sides there? There we go. I think it looks like... It, it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. Now we go in with the brow here. In some 2D Sonic art, he's drawn with one brow. But here I'm going to add the other brow in just a few more steps. But first, let me ink that ear. And here's the leg. Well, the other one anyway. And now you got to show some love to those cuffs. Almost said socks. Believe me, I have to correct myself every time mentally. Really. I think it started when I was a kid. I rented some book from the library about Sonic losing his shoes or something. He just had socks. I don't want to keep going on about this. <laughs> and there's that quill. And you see, when Sonic is drawn in 2D, the quills are always... It's like they're stacked on top of each other, with the ones at the bottom being at the forefront. 
and the ones at the top being behind. Get the fold there. Looking good, looking good. Then can't forget about the tummy patch. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and ink this with a dark tan right there. Awesome. I think it looks good. And there's that aforementioned brow I was talking about. And this is what your line art should look like so far. Now, here's a technique that I like to use. Because I'm working with a raster image here, and sometimes, you know, the sides of each line can look a little pixely, I'm actually going in and I'm shaving off the sides that end a bit too abruptly, for a lack of a better term. You see how the ends of each line are a bit rounded? I'm just going in and I'm shaving them just so it can have like a like a smoother transition, just so the lines can look sharper. I know that might be a little bit too hard to pull off traditionally, but if you have an eraser, you never know. You know, all this drawing can work up an appetite, so why don't you guys check out Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Hey guys, Moogie here. And Axel Lazuli. And we're checking out the Sugoi Summer Tokyo Treat Box. As the name implies, everything here is absolutely delicious. We even have a brand new Kit Kat flavor. Yeah, and there's so much more to choose from from this box. We have some potato snacks. We've got some noodles here. And we've even got a brand new soda. Yeah, it looks like it's a strawberry flavor. We've also got some additional ramen -A candies. Super tasty. As you can see, this box has a ton of cool stuff. You guys can have these snacks shipped to you directly from Japan. You guys should sign up, consider it, look at it. Everything here is super worth it. There's so much variety. Yeah, every month you'll get a different surprise, so it's really worth checking out in our opinion. And now the Sakurako box. This box specializes in tea and snacks that go great with tea time. It also comes complete with information about where each item comes from in terms of geographical location in Japan and a surprise like those chopsticks. This month's box specialized in a lot of different brown sugar goodies I noticed. There are things like brown sugar donuts, brown sugar cookies, everything here was super delicious and the tea came straight from Okinawa and is an Okinawan specialty. Yeah, and what's actually really cool about the Sakurako box is if you love tea, like Axel, there's just so much here in this box for you to, to experience. Look at the sheer amount of deliciousness I'm unpacking. There's so many different variety here that everybody is bound to find something they love for that perfect tea time. Yeah, as you can see, she's still digging and she's just, there's so much here in this box. Every month you can get this. This is like a tourism specializing in tea delivered straight to your house. This is like a trip to Japan in the form of tea delivered straight to your house. Straight to my house? All right, that actually sounds pretty dang good. Get ready for the perfect tea time. All right, let's get our hands on this Tokyo treat box and check out what's inside. These were some delicious truffle potato chips. And if you guys know me, you know I love potatoes and I love mushrooms. And this was a match made in heaven. Yeah, they have this, you said truffle oil on them, right? Yes, and I actually plan on ordering more because they were so good. Yeah, and next up, this is one of my personal favorites. These are like little ramen candies. Uh, they're actually meant to look like little watermelon seeds, as you can tell with the, the cute packaging there. Um, once you open it up, a bunch of little purple candies will fall right into the palm of your hand. They're really tasty though, despite their size. They're gonna be gone really fast because they're just that sweet and they're just that poppable. The last thing we're gonna show here is this delicious Kit Kat. Japan is known for its specialty Kit Kats and this one's no exception. The Cafe Ale is latte flavored. Yeah, and I don't like coffee, but I love these. These are amazing. And voila, the Sakurako box. Here we're actually gonna be getting into some of its contents. These little donuts were brown sugar morsels. They were incredible. And the tea was straight from Okinawa. It was delicious. Yeah, nice and earthy too. It, it's kind of a nostalgic flavor. That's the best way I can describe it. It's really an experience. Everything that you get in this box really offers something new that I've never really had before. 
Yeah. And here, last but not least, are some little jelly, like, candies. I love gummy candies, so these were really, really, really nice. They were a perfect blend of sweetness and tartness and made a great companion for the tea. Like everything else, just this is great, especially if you just want to sit down, relax, and enjoy something nice. It's all the perfect blend of synergy. If you guys are interested in getting your hands on these snack boxes, all you gotta do is just go into the video description or pinned comment below and use the code MoogieMikey to get $5 off your first Sakurako box and Tokyo Treat box. It also supports the channel. Thanks guys, and back to the video. Now I'm going in with the color. Because this is classic Sonic, you want his blue to be a little bit lighter. I wouldn't consider him cyan because cyan is a bit green. Well, it's between blue and green anyway. Well, modern Classic Sonic is more light blue than anything. Classic Sonic in the actual 90s ranged from dark blue to light blue. It just really depended on the artist or the game. It was never really consistent. So right now, because I use the fill bucket tool, I'm just going in and I'm cleaning up the sides of the lines. You may or may not have this issue. Fill in the eyes there. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually leaving a little bit of each eye alone on the bottom right, because in some classic Sonic art, his eyes actually have a tinge of brown. They actually did this in the Sonic Origins cutscenes uh, recently too. I always thought that was kind of cool. I always thought brown and blue look really good together. I'm not saying I like Sonic with brown eyes more than green. I think the green is very vibrant, but I think it's a nice variety. And now I just add those lines in there just to give it a little bit more of a, a gradient look. Fill in the nose. Fill in the shoes. Fill it in with that nice vibrant red. Speaking of which, if I had to guess Sonic's favorite color, I would say it's red. To me, it makes no sense for his favorite color to be blue. He is blue. If his favorite color is blue, you'd think his shoes would be blue, right? But no, his color of choice when it comes to fashion is red. That's what he wears anyway. Speaking of which, I can't stand tails with blue shoes. I'm just throwing that out there right now. Oh yeah, fill in the buckle as well with a nice golden yellow. There we go. And I filled in the sides with a lighter yellow. And here is the, the peach tan uh, fleshy fur color, whatever that is. You know, for the longest time when I was a kid, I always thought it was skin, but I guess it makes sense for it to be fur. color in the muzzle. I think it looks really good with that tan outline. I think the division between the eyes is really cool. Fill that in. Make sure you didn't miss any spots. And now I'm actually going to go in and add a little bit of a shadow cast behind this glove here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here underneath this sock, well, underneath this cuff. There we go. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually figuring out what colors to shade his muzzle. So what I did was I went into a new layer and I picked out a dark magenta color and I turned down the opacity over his muzzle and then I color grabbed it. 
And now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm adding shading where I think it would be best here on this image. For those of you wondering, the light source would technically be above him. Not too much, though. Just imagine it would be noon. Noon in Green Hill. Well, Emerald Hill. Emerald Hill is better. We've got enough Green Hill going on here. Add a little bit of it right there. Now, you don't have to do the shading if you don't want to, especially if you're working traditionally. I understand that it may be difficult to get these colors. But if you are interested, you could always try experimenting. You never know what you may end up with. And now I'm adding a little bit of shading right here. His head is casting this shadow. I'm going to fill in the rest with blue here. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in with a darker blue, somewhat purple, turn down the opacity, and then color grab it. And then use that as my darker blue. So his big head is casting a shadow. And now right here, I'm drawing the line connecting to his the end of his quill here, basically as the border for where um, where I fill in the uh, the shading. It's got some big quills, so make sure you shade them good. Fill in any little spots that you may have missed. It's always important. Now, when it comes to shading quills, I have always loved how Sonic X did it. Sonic X has shaped me from when I was a young child. Even though I grew up with Sonic since 1994, Sonic X came out when I was still a little kid. And the art from that show inspired me so much, especially when it came to coloring and shading. I'm acting like that show is something spectacular to look at, huh? But I think when it comes to shading and coloring Sonic characters, you know, that show, it, it did all right. And don't forget behind the ear there. And here's his ear right here. Fill that in. Because his ear wraps in, I'm adding some shading right there. I'm going to do the same thing for his brow, too. Because there's an indent, like it rolls in like that, there would be a little bit of shading right there. All across his brow like that. Just a little bit of shading. A little goes a long way. Feel free to extend it in certain parts if you feel like you could use it. And right here, I'm filling in the shading for this quill. You know, when I was in elementary school, I actually had a friend that called his quills uh, uh, fins, believe it or not. When he asked me to draw Sonic, he was like, oh, hey, could you make his fins longer? I'm like, fins? What are you talking about? He's not a fish. I wonder if he still says it to this day. Hope not. Add in the uh, the shading right here underneath his arm. There we go, because his arm is casting a shadow. Then you want to go in and add that to his leg as well. 
keep using that same blue. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to blend because I think that's a completely different thing. It's a bit more advanced. This one, I just want to get across the importance of uh, lighting and shadows. some shading right here as well his leg is well his his foot is upside down so it's natural that it would cast some sort of shadow now it looks a little bit off to me so I'm actually gonna go in and add a bit more of shadow here way more shading there we go I think that looks much better Now what I'm doing is I'm figuring out how the, the shoe is going to look when darker. I'm going with a bit more of a, like a wine, a dark wine red. I basically use the same technique. I go into a new layer, turn down the opacity with the color, and then I color grab it. And I also want the under part of the shoe as well. Figured it would look a little bit better, especially right next to the, uh, the shading on the upper part of the shoe there. And then we'll go on to the other shoe here. Remember, his shoe is upside down. And then his quill's gonna cast a little bit out of a shadow too. It's like everything's interacting. Fill that in. Add a little bit of a shadow underneath the buckle too. All right, it's looking good so far. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to figure out what color to shade underneath his brow? Because his brow is kind of big and it's also going to cast a shadow. Because his eyes are organic, I'm going for a bit of a more livelier color. This is like a teal, like a darker teal. Again, I used the same technique where I went into a new layer, turned down the opacity, and then color grabbed it. Right there, underneath the brow. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. And because his gloves and, you know, the whites on the rest of his design aren't organic, I'm using a bit of a pale lavender. Makes it look a little bit gray, but not too gray to the point where it looks like he's a robot or he's got mechanical parts or something. It looks just lively enough. Add some shading right here, because there are folds. There is depth there, believe it or not. I'm gonna redo that right there to get it just right. Hopefully yours is coming along very well so far. Adding some shading right here at the bottom of his fist. Fill that in. Give some uh, give some depth here to his knuckles as well. I feel like it makes it all stand out a bit more. And because this hand is a bit in the background, I'm gonna make I'm gonna mostly shade it in. But I'm gonna give enough room for the light to wrap around right here because the the shoe is upside down I'm gonna mostly shade it the light that's being cast is still wrapping around it but shadows are dominant here do the same thing right here and fill in the points there uh, underneath the buckle connect the points right there with the reds do the same thing right here. Connect it with the reds. 
you know, if it helps you, you can always draw a line going through it and then just go through and shade underneath the line and then erase the line later. Then here's some shading right here for the, the cuffs of the shoe. Add one right here as well. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna shave a little bit of that off like that. Because it's at the top, I don't want it to be too strong. The light does take precedence up there. Now I'm going in with some highlights. I'm using a lighter blue here. Again, the same technique where I go in in a new layer, put that color over the color I want to pick, and then I color grab it. I just, I turned down the opacity just a little bit. So now I'm adding the lighting up here. Again, like I said, the way I color Sonic, especially when I when I shade Sonic like this, I I was inspired by Sonic X. Sonic X was my main inspiration. Make sure you fill in everything here. Go ahead and add it to the ear as well. It's okay to have light wrap around like that. No biggie. Looks like it's coming together so far. Now, because light is on top of the ear, you wanna make sure it's there as well. Again, the lighting here gives it much more depth. Do it on the brows here as well. And because, uh, and because Sonic is drawn during the day here, there is going to be more light than shadow. And by during the day, I mean the environment he's in is well lit. Because if he was drawn at night, <laughs> the highlights wouldn't be like this whatsoever. They'd be quite minimal, actually. and then go in and uh, take care of the other quills as well. Have that light wrap around. That's the cool thing about light, you know? It wraps around things. Light is powerful. Go fill that in. And then again, do it to this quill as well. Just have it wrap around just a little bit. Fill it in. But man, even almost three decades later, I still enjoy drawing Sonic. He is so fun to draw. He's what actually inspired me to draw. I'm sure it's the same for most people out there watching this, but yeah, no, his design is just super appealing. And I just love how universal it is, and how, I just love how enticing it is to make people want to pick up a pencil and start drawing. It doesn't matter what your skill level is either. His design is just fun, and that's the most important thing about this. Going with the shading on the leg here too. Fill that in. Go in with the tail as well. Have it wrap around. right here on his back. And like I said, a little goes a long way. Just add some uh, highlights here and there, some shading here and there as well. Really makes the character pop. And this is what your Sonic should look like. You can always touch it up here and there if you want, but 
yeah, this is basically it. Right here, I'm just adding in uh, a few more details with the buckle, giving it uh, some shine. And our Sonic is complete! If you'd like to show me what your Sonic looks like, you can always tag me on Twitter at Mugiwara Mikey, and I'll go ahead and I'll retweet it. That'll actually be all for now, and I do want to thank you guys for watching this tutorial. If you guys want to see more, every week with Axel Azalee I do How to Draw Smash Bros. characters over on my Twitch channel. The link is in the description. And I actually have a huge backlog of How to Draw Sonic characters. They were done as streams, but there's a huge backlog. Just go through my playlists and you'll find them. If you guys want to see more like this, just let me know. And again, I thank you for your time. Catch you guys later.